Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how narcissists betray you. Please hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website, it is narcsurvivor.co.uk. This is how narcissists betray you. When you separate from the narcissist, it can be very confusing because you may have thought they were connected with you where you weren't just spending time together but you may have thought you were being seen, heard and understood by the narcissist. You may have thought that they cared for you and respected you because you experienced a sense of closeness and a connection and you may have thought that you were being loved and appreciated as though they recognized your worth and importance. But narcissists see love as a weakness. They see it as something for them to exploit, to give themselves an advantage and to make you do what they want. And this all starts at the beginning of the relationship where you invested your feelings but they didn't invest theirs because narcissists are emotionally unavailable so they are disconnected from their feelings but they mirrored you and they appeal to your own ideals they behaved the way that you wanted them to they told you what you wanted to cure they shared your dreams and aspirations as though they're on the same wavelength until you feel like you've met someone with similar qualities. Someone who wants what you want and values what you value, which creates a false sense of connection and it makes you want to stay very close to them because you think they're the same as you, but all they're doing is mirroring you. They're reflecting back to you everything that you would want rather than anything that reveals anything about themselves. Which is why from the very beginning, they were studying you. They were learning about your likes and dislikes before you had even tested or examined them to discover if there's anything wrong with them or before you had found any inconsistencies in their character. They create this sense of urgency they show feelings or an attitude that suggests that something must be carried out quickly and with great intensity because they're just trying to gather data so that they can gain a deeper understanding of how they can create the character that you want to see. And then that's exactly what they do. They concoct this fantasy based on whatever they think is in your imagination because they want your desire. They want to be your preference which is why they imitate the appearance of a character or they pretend to feel certain emotions because it gets them what they want from you. Your energy and emotions and sometimes even your money because you believe in this character. You believe that it's genuine and you believe that it's perfect. You believe that it has all the required and desired elements, qualities and characteristics as though it's completely free from faults or defects, when the reality is that it's not. So if someone is displaying themselves as everything you could want and need, that should be your first red flag. Because nothing ever occurs without problems or difficulties. At times we should feel hurt and disappointed because no one is ever going to be perfect. There may be some good things about them but there's also going to be some things that are bad. If there's more good than bad, then it may be worth fighting for, especially if you left with more than what they had taken. While they may have just have been taken away from you, they may have been using up everything you had, which is another red flag. 
and it gets to this point because they're just reflecting back to you whatever they think you want from them. They're holding up a mirror to you. So really, you're just falling in love with yourself. And it all begins from them listening to you and collecting data because you're giving them all of the information to give you everything that you want and need. Or if they haven't got much data, they may just take things from their previous source of supply, things that they never gave to them, and they will just give that to you, which leaves you feeling like you've met your soulmate, someone who loves and cares about you, when really they're just holding a mirror in front of you and you're falling in love with yourself until inevitably their mask begins to slip and you begin to see who they actually are. And from that point on, you spend all of your time trying to get them to go back to the character that you saw at the beginning because you're not happy with who they really are, which causes a narcissistic injury. And it's why they punish you. It's why they mirrored you in the first place because they knew you weren't going to be happy with who they really are. They don't even like themselves, so they know you wouldn't like them. Which is why instead they just reflect back to you whatever they think you want and need. They hold a mirror in front of you because they already know that you like yourself. That's why they targeted you because you like yourself and they don't like themselves. So those qualities of self-love and self-esteem are things they don't have. But they want you to provide those qualities to them, which is why they hold a mirror in front of themselves directed at you, so that you will give them your self-love and self-esteem. But when you're trying to get back to the beginning of the relationship and you're questioning them about who they are, they take that as an insult because they already knew you weren't going to be happy with them. And by questioning them, you're confirming that you're not happy after they spent all of that time reflecting back to you what you want and need. And you didn't spend any time reflecting back what they want and need. They accepted you, but you didn't accept them once you saw who they really are which is why they then seek to punish you and they start to devalue you because you unintentionally insulted them by not being happy. Once you figured out who they really are, you didn't like it. So then they begin devaluing you and everything you thought they liked in the beginning is what they will resent and punish you for. They will discard you or give you the silent treatment because they see it as though if you're not happy with them, then you don't deserve anything from them. You don't even deserve to conversate with them, even though they were wearing a mask the entire time and they knew exactly what they were doing. They were doing things that they didn't really want to do, things that they had no interest in. Because if they were really enjoying doing those things, why aren't they doing them now? And that's how you know that it was done with an objective in mind. They mirror you only to get your attention. Because that's what they crave. That's what they want. So they mimic your feelings and behaviors and then they exaggerate it. They act like they're more happier or more sad than you are. And as though they're more interested in certain things when really they don't even care about it. They're just using it as a means to get your attention because that's all they really want. And by mirroring you, they don't have to take accountability for what they're doing because it's a lot easier for them to give you a negative or unfavorable response than to accept that maybe they hurt you. Because it takes strength for a person to look at their own actions, which is why that's something narcissists don't do, because they lack the internal strength. So they're never going to be honest with themselves. They will do anything they can to avoid that. 
such as if you say that they betrayed you by cheating on you, they will say that you betrayed them by looking at another person 10 years ago. Because initially, they are idealizing you. They're viewing you as perfect until their mask begins to slip and you see who they really are. And that's when they begin nitpicking and fault finding and looking at tiny things to see where you might have made a mistake or done something wrong so that they can use it to justify their behavior. And even if you're a perfect person and you've never made a mistake, they can always rewrite the past and just make something up. Or they can push and provoke you to the point where you do slip up because everyone has their limits. And they know there's only going to be so much that you can take until you finally do something bad in response to what they're doing to you. And then they can use it to justify their behavior. Even if you only looked at a person one time, they will use it to justify their 20 affairs and to justify them giving you the silent treatment, which of course is very unfair and extreme. But this is exactly what narcissists do. They will make it out like you betrayed them, even if you never actually did anything at all, so that they can avoid taking accountability for who they are and what they did, because they don't want to accept that they hurt you. They are shame-based people who are doing everything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. They are haunted by the things they did to you, which is why they always find a way to justify it and mirror it back to you. They mirror it back so that they can run from themselves instead of having to take accountability because they can't accept themselves. It's too painful for them to deal with. But they may also mimic empathy by sharing their past traumas with you, such as a bad relationship or something that happened in their childhood to make you feel something for them. As though they had empathy for a person or issue that happened in their life, when really they're just using it to make you think that they have empathy. But just because a person can share a traumatic event, that does not mean they have empathy. They're just recollecting something that happened, but there's no feelings involved. They're just mimicking your emotions to provide you with a false, a, a, a false sense of connection, as though they actually understand and care. When really, there's no one even there. It's just a reflection of yourself. They're just mimicking what they thought you would want them to be or what they thought would get a reaction out of you. Because when they're mimicking and mirroring you, they're man manipulating you. They're influencing and controlling your thoughts, feelings and emotions so that you don't have an active or participatory, participatory role in making a decision which means that there's no way for you to bring up actual problems. So then the narcissist never has to be accountable for anything. And instead they ignore every issue and every abusive thing that they've ever done. By reducing down to something so small that they end up blaming you for, even though what they're blaming you for may not be your fault as well which is why they have to manipulate you and they have to use mirroring. And they will make it out as though the only reason you're hurt and they're punishing you is because you betrayed them. So that's why you feel that way. And when they're manipulating you, it's just based on whatever they're going through in that moment. They're just projecting whatever they feel about themselves which is why they will often accuse you of being angry or jealous because they're disowning parts of themselves that they don't like and assigning them to you. They're inauthentic. They're not real people. Which is why you do need to be careful when you're interacting with someone 
and you observe a lot of mimicking or mirroring. Narcissists will often do this when they are accusing you of something. They will flip the script. They will change the entire idea of the event in order to put the blame back onto you. Because if they can put the blame back onto you, it puts you on the defensive. And if they do it long enough, they can gaslight you and brainwash you into believing something that's not even true about yourself, which is typically what they're trying to do. Because if they can manipulate you and gaslight you into being defensive, then you're less likely to blame them because you're not even going to know the facts of what actually happened. So you're going to be very confused and you may even feel a sense of fear, obligation and guilt as a result of everything they're putting you through. So you may find that it's easier just to accept the blame than to figure out what they're doing. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.